Uh, did you have a plan for how you wanted to go about this? Yes, I do. Um, yeah, I just figured we'd take it up a little bit. Um, oh, good. And, uh, I love finding that out now. Yeah, Without I know. any prep time. Yep, I know. I know. And that's what's going to make it very interesting, I think. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Thomas here with For Real Movie News and Reviews. And today I have Taylor uh, Baker from Drinking the Movies on the Line so that we can discuss Sundance, which I'm super excited about. Taylor, thanks for waking up at the butt crack at 1030. <laughs> be Thank here. you for having me. Thank you for forcing me to roll out of bed far earlier than I would choose to on a Saturday. Yes. <laughs> what a journey just this whole pre-Sundance thing has been. I remember a couple months ago when we were talking about, hey, can we put a, a trip together to actually go to Sundance? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good thing that didn't work out. Um, yes, uh, <laughs> it is. You're once again taking credit for ruining a fun plan uh and and then having that plan not work out anyways <laughs> yes. yes i am taking that credit thank you but for um, any unaware uh it was originally in person and online and now it's only online because mm -hmm. of something called covid covid that thing that, did i miss you know, this <laughs> yeah no it's, it's just that little thing that we've only been dealing with for a, you know a little two-year period so far mm -hmm. Yeah, so you know, I and I think we all understand the um the, why the decision was made, and I'm sure it was a very very tough decision to make. Um, maybe even a very costly decision um that Sundance made uh to to move the whole thing um to uh online only. Uh, but you know, we understand it, and you know, I respect that decision, and 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 hoping that everyone out there is staying safe and healthy. <laughs> However, I do want to go back to our original schedule which fit my lifestyle a lot easier. <laughs> I know. The, the, okay, so after after the doomed uh, trip to uh, Park City didn't work out, then we got a schedule and we scheduled everything out. Oh, we spent hours, hours. tabulating, I, Excel days. sheeting. <laughs> oh, man. Like making me, copies of Thomas's schedule and then mm -hmm. deleting most of the data and then putting in my data. <laughs> yeah. So he spent days, I spent hours. Yeah, it was great. So that's, that's exactly what happened, right? Just to uh, just to have to redo that process. I did um, not. I just said no. Nope. <laughs> not because they're just going to change the dates and times again in the movies. I'm not doing it again. <laughs> this is, you know what? Sundance is a very robust exercise in spreadsheeting. Uh huh. <laughs> it's just this is just the futility practice. of spreadsheeting. It's a future yes. film for Thomas. <laughs> it will debut at Sundance 2025. Just wait. <laughs> uh, so I'm uh, as so a, a couple of the, the basic things to know about Sundance. The uh, the festival is running uh, as we said completely online from January 20th to January 30th. So 10 days. Um, and, and as of right now, there's still tons of individual tickets available to be purchased. Yes. Yes. So take advantage of that because there's a lot, I mean, a lot of really promising uh, uh, movies and storytelling and experiences uh, that, that, uh, that are premiering and that are screening at Sundance. So, and honestly, twenty dollars for a ticket isn't that bad. I remember yeah. some of the New York Film Festival stuff being like fifty, seventy-five dollars mm -hmm. um, for some of those premier access. And if you're anywhere in the U.S., you can just buy a ticket to watch something for twenty bucks. Um, and I don't know if After Yang is still on that list, but I, I would pay a lot more than twenty dollars <laughs> to watch After Yang. <laughs> you have been very, very excited about After Yang, and uh, we are likely going to talk more about that uh, later on. Um, we so as press, we got uh, twenty five tickets. It's ten mm -hmm. premieres, fifteen. Um, 15 second screenings. And I think you said you have, you have reserved all 25 of your tickets of already, right? I have reserved all but one second screening, mm. which I already know what I want to use it for, but I'm waiting. I'm mm -hmm. waiting, practicing, <laughs> practicing, not, not, uh, you know, 
pursuing a ticket before I mm-hmm. hear what other uh, films, how good they are. And then I've got two premieres left for awards considerations. I was hoping, as you're aware, mm-hmm. that Kimmy would become uh, one of the bowing titles that shows up at the festival, but it does not appear that that's going to be what happens. So I'm going to probably start using those premiere tickets on uh, mm-hmm. other things because I don't suspect that I'm going to be too interested in the awards fair. Or maybe year. you, I, I, maybe you, you will have already seen most of what uh, what goes up for awards. So that's hopefully what I'm strategizing (laughs) (laughs) yeah so i've been trying to one of the things that i'm practicing 2022 one of my i guess we're going to call it a resolution or a goal or whatever one of the things that i'm trying to get something to fail at something to fail at which is entirely likely we're going to see how this goes but i'm trying to be more mindful about um not uh over committing myself and not Mm doing way too much because 2021 I don't know what that would be like i can't yeah, it, imagine i yeah so 2020 and 2021 were the years of me doing way too much it was it was fun in the moment but it took quite the toll so mm-hmm. having learned some lessons over the past couple of years i've i've uh i've booked seven of my premieres and 12 of my second screenings or which pretty close i've yeah, only booked yeah. three more movies than you <laughs> i get it that, that's, that's that's one way of looking <laughs> at it um but uh i am interested in seeing what goes up for awards and uh and reserving those tickets for that um and i i'm still on the fence on whether i want to use those last um those last uh second screening tickets because my schedule after calibrating and then recalibrating my schedule I the one the one constant that was true both times is that there's not enough time in my life <laughs> and so <laughs> and so uh, I'm gonna see about yeah what, picking what the second screenings in. from the Monday premieres mm-hmm. is like necessary so yeah. that you can have those uh, totally empty days of premieres to watch those second screenings. Mm-hmm. So I, I definitely built backwards because the crunch of Friday through Sunday is going to be massive. Mm-hmm. And then massive, Monday through yeah. Wednesday will hopefully be a little bit lighter. Obviously Monday is going to have the most mm-hmm. titles that you have to try to cram, but then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that's going to be a lot lighter. Yeah. So my schedule is going to be very Saturday, Sunday heavy because I I'm actually not taking time off work for this. Um, so it will uh, it will be interesting to uh, I you know doing six seven movie days on Saturday and Sunday, um, which is fine on the weekend. But uh, but yeah, and on top of that, you know, I have some interviews that uh, I want to get published, uh, uh, you know, throughout the festival, and so it'll be yeah, it's going to be a very interesting thing. <laughs> yeah, exercise and creating more time. Cre- exercising, you know what. I that that that's a skill I should have learned in college. If they had a uh, like a, a degree for how to make more time, that would be a mm-hmm. really great thing for me to do. <laughs> Mastery of working from bed. Yes, yes, yes. Actually, if I could just get that little time thing that Hermione had in Prisoner of Azkaban, the time that's turner. Little, yeah, that's what I really need. Look, if I, if anyone wants to get me a birthday or a Christmas gift, find me one of those. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I kind of talked to you about this uh, a little bit before the show, but I wanted to switch things up a little and, uh, and try, yeah. um, yeah, try a little different format this time. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through the Sundance, uh, lineup by program and mm-hmm. make the, and, and I'm going to ask you, and I'm gonna do this myself, uh, try to choose our most anticipated film by program. Because as we know, uh, with this ticketing process, Sundance is about making clutch choices. And so I'm just dialing that stress up a little bit uh, and seeing if we can pull pull our, our one favorite uh, or one uh, most anticipated film out of each program. And we'll mm-hmm. probably talk about other things along the way. Um, but uh, but yeah. Well, I think we've both had a chance to, to see some stuff and mm-hmm. you've got some interviews that you're planning. So as mm-hmm. we work through, we'll just talk about that stuff as well as the what we perceive to be most promising title in each of these uh selection groups categories what what, what is uh the official terminology from them category categories categories, programs yeah um yeah that's what we're talking about we're going to start with u.s dramatic competition um taylor what is your number one take a guess Uh, hold on let me look through it really quick uh ooh. Ooh, I'm, I, I have a guess, but I'm going to, I'm going to hold off and just let you say it. 
That's not a guess. I asked you no. if you have a guess. I Make think your your, guess. my guess is, is probably Cha-Cha Real Smooth. That's correct. Ah, that's so The good. Dakota Johnson <laughs> film uh, from Cooper. Gosh, I'm forgetting his last name, but he made Shit House, which mm-hmm. I think I watched in 2020 as part of uh, like the San Diego Film Festival. Um, mm-hmm. And I really had a great time. It was him and Dylan Galula, who's incredibly charming and effusive. And uh, Dakota Johnson, I think, is a great fit for that comedic styling that I saw in Shit House. So Cha Cha Real Smooth is uh, definitely my favorite out of these selections mm-hmm. of uh, what's available in that dramatic competition. How about you? Yeah, so uh, Cha Cha Real Smooth from uh, Cooper Rafe. Is that you pronounce yes, name? that's what I thought. But then I was yeah. like, maybe that's a different director. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> um, I you mentioned Cha Cha Real Smooth, and I looked into it, and I'm like, that actually looks pretty interesting. Um, and so I do have uh, I, I do have high hopes for that one. Um, and, well, but you're gonna now- talk about Duel now. Oh, is it that obvious? Yes, I'm going to talk about Duel. Um, Duel from director Riley Stearns, who directed one of my favorite films uh, from the film festival circuit a couple of years ago, uh, The Art of Self-Defense. I uh, was a big fan of that of that movie. Um, and uh, the movie also stars Aaron Paul, who a lot of people probably know from Breaking Bad, um, and mm-hmm. Karen Gillian, who... Uh, Gillian. Gillian, uh, sorry. Uh, Jumanji... Nebula. Nebula, Nebula, Jumanji movies. Um, so yeah, interesting cast, I, I, uh, interesting director, and I'm very, I, I can't wait to see what he does with this, uh, with this story. Um, and uh, and yeah, I think it, it'll be, it'll be interesting. I guess. Um, I just, I, I love the names attached to this. So yes, I can't wait. <laughs> um. Is, are there any is there anything else that stands out to you here in uh, in this US dramatic competition category? Yeah, it's probably the most dense. I don't like uh, Riley Stearns particularly, but mm-hmm. I do find myself curious to see how he's evolving as an artist just because I don't respond to it doesn't mean that he's not doing art that's worth engaging with. It's just not really something that speaks to me. I mm-hmm. still like catching up with it. So I, I do have a ticket for dual. Um, other titles that I'm looking um, forward to potentially are Master and Watcher. Um, mm-hmm. And then I've got tickets for Alice and Palm Trees and Power Lines, which I'm hopeful for, but I'm not overly counting on. And then I don't expect anything good out of 892, but I'm booked for it because I, I got to see what Boyega is trying to do next with his production yeah. company. Yeah. And I think like I, I kind of second all of that. Um, this is a this is a dense category. Like everything mm-hmm. in this category, I was very um, interested in and very excited about, and very you know a little disgruntled that I, you know, my ticket selection is limited. Um, so it, it yeah, was there's hard to... so many directorial debuts here from really mm-hmm. promising filmmakers. Right, You've got Mariama Diallo who's directing Master. She's got great buzz about her short film Hairwolf mm-hmm. from 2018. Jamie Dack is the director of Palm Trees and Power Lines based on her previous short film. Um, you got Mimi Cave making Fresh, who's made a bunch of different uh, short films over the years. So there's these great directorial views from female filmmakers just cluttering this category mm-hmm. you know the one wild card for me in this and I'm, I'm actually still thinking on it i have not made a decision on this yet um is whether i want to see uh blood um i think the premise is interesting um but you know kind of looking at the history with the director he's a little hit or miss with his movies sometimes and so i'm I'm hopeful for it. And I'm like, I'm trying to figure out like, is this one I can make time for? Like, I want to see it. Um, but, you know, with, with scheduling and, and, you know, trying to allocate a time, it's a, it's a 111 minute runtime. Um, so, I mean, not the longest thing ever, but, uh, but still need to need to decide if I can fit it into the schedule. So. Yeah. He's got, um, an up and down mixed at best type mm-hmm. of a career so far, but you know, right. you never know when that career turns around or when that one great project that a filmmaker mm-hmm. creates comes out. But, right. And that's kind of um, what I'm holding on. That's like the hope that I'm holding on to. Like, I wonder if this is going to be that, that project, if this is going to be the one that, that, that ends up surprising everyone. Um, and it turns out to be really good. So uh, yeah. So that, that's what I'm still thinking about. Uh, yeah. And, and I think you mentioned most of the other ones. So. 
I did um, mention most of the other ones because there's a lot <laughs> that I want to watch in this category. Yes. Um, moving on to U.S. documentary competition. Mm-hmm. And what in this category stands out to you? What are you most uh, excited for? Here? I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I don't have a single ticket reserved for any of these movies. If I was going to pick one, though, it mm-hmm. would be Fire of Love, the mm-hmm. documentary about the couple um, who, if, if I'm remembering correctly, because I know them from Werner Herzog, who collaborated with uh, these volcanologists as a filmmaker, they are were like a, a team of volcanologists, and they went around the world studying volcanoes, and they uh, died tragically f- from being too close to a volcanic eruption um mm-hmm. but they they'd spent uh decades you know as a uh, married couple who worked together um and i think that whatever documentary is about volcanoes and a decades long romance sounds uh pretty pleasing to watch to me um mm-hmm. in the middle of a film festival if uh we're able to get screeners for it i would certainly make time for it it's just this is not one of the uh categories that stuck out as a place to spend my very limited ticket amounts this mm-hmm. year yeah and that's the you know kind of like we mentioned in the last category that's the struggle right there's there's a lot to choose from and you want to get to a lot but when we have limited time and and a limited ticket availability you kind of have to choose wisely and um or choose carefully, I guess. This is, yes. I will kind of echo what you're saying here. I think there's a lot of interesting subject matters here. Um, uh, but this is, this was a category where uh, I didn't, I don't think I reserved any tickets in this one either. Um, but uh, the, there was a movie that I did consider um, getting a ticket for and, and hope that it shows up at other film festivals coming up. And that's Free Chosuli. Um I kind of, I really like those uh, stories where that examine whether someone was actually guilty. You know, I kind of think about like that first season of Serial um, and, uh, you know, going through the evidence and having, um, you know, witnesses and testimony and like trying to figure it out, right? There's a mystery component to it. And I I don't know if that's exactly what this is, um, but there's definitely that component of like, this guy was considered guilty off of flimsy evidence. Let's try to retrospectively piece together what actually happened um, if it's really high quality investigative journalism then yes mm-hmm. my concern is that most of these are always trial propaganda and mm. it normally always ties with um you know a, a hearing to see if there's going to be a reduced sentence or mm-hmm. early release and in 83 minutes i don't think you're going to get an incredibly high level of journalistic integrity examining the various details of this. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, to me, just, I, I, I think that most documentaries nowadays are uh, PR promotional mm, um, pieces. They're very, very affordable promotional pieces. You don't need um, to hire a cast. You just need mm-hmm. to hire a director and a sound crew and an editor, and you can, turn out uh, a PR piece. And I, Mm -hmm. I'm worried that that's what this is. I'm totally willing to change my mind. Mm -hmm. I just, this has the stink to me of another uh, trial piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it'll, it'll, I mean, we never know until it comes out and we see it and, you know, that's possible. Maybe it's good. Uh, You know, we'll see. I mean, the, the other one that I was considering and, and that I actually still would like to watch is probably TikTok boom. Um, As a marketer, it's, it's relevant for me. Um, But I, I guess I'm interested in what, uh, if you're going to analyze TikTok, and there's a lot to analyze with TikTok. I think that the TikTok platform is, is in a way, both evolving and revolutionizing how people use social media. Um, mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm, I, having learned TikTok more recently than most, um, it's, it's such an interesting platform to see how people are becoming video producers in a way right like there is some really high production quality uh, stuff on there that um that tiktok is now making accessible to everyone and so i really hope that it's able to dive into those you know that topic and, and cover what tiktok like the the effect of tiktok on society um and also like the terrible part of it which is like it examines every single thing you do on your phone and times its notifications to try to um manipulate you the most it's the oh yeah one of the only apps ever where you have to um try to exit the app twice in order to be able to actually exit the app it's it's a 
disgusting piece of technology if you ask yeah. me but i i, I think um, that, yeah. yeah the filmmaker is Sh- shalini kantaya if i remember mm-hmm. correctly and she did coded bias um mm-hmm. uh if not last year than the year before and i just disliked that film greatly so i mean i'll I'll try uh, TikTok boom out at some point, undoubtedly as mm-hmm. uh, 2022 progresses at different film festivals, but I, mm-hmm. I'm not prioritizing it at Sundance. That's fair. Yep. Um, cool. Uh, moving on to world dramatic competition. What are you thinking Ooh. here? What's your most anticipated one? So there's a lot of different movies in this uh, category that I'm intrigued by, but mm-hmm. there's only one that I reserved a ticket for. You want to take a guess? Hmm. Is it, I mean, I know the one that I reserved a ticket for is You Won't Be Alone. The Numi Rapace film, You Won't mm-hmm. Be Alone. Sounds like we're a simpatico on this. Yeah. Um, I recently did a, a very small amount of digging, I will say. And that small amount of digging had me uh, a little bit intrigued by the fact that while she is the um, cover art of the film on Letterboxd and doing general Google searches, She's actually not listed on the poster or in most websites as the primary actress or actor. Uh, Mm. She's the and. She's uh, regarded as the Meryl Streep ad on at the end, you know, and Numi Rapace. There's uh, Mm. Sarah Klamaska and the Maria Marinchka, Alice Engler. There's lots of other performers listed above. So I'm not too certain exactly how this is going to play out. but I'm very excited to see Numi in mm-hmm. something that's a little bit harrowing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it will be. Int- I guess I I didn't uh, do that much uh, as much digging into it as you did, but that's a very interesting observation. Um, it's I, I'm happy to see marketing playing their best cards uh, on this one. So, uh, but it does look interesting. I mean, it already has a uh, uh, distribution uh, slated, mm-hmm. and so. Uh, I, the, you know, that's a, a really positive sign for the, the quality of the film and the confidence in this film. Um, and that was a big selling point on on me getting on board with this one. So, And it's another directorial debut from another short filmmaker. It's, yeah. it's a, a good time to get a head start on all those directorial debuts of the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was, I think that was the main one that stood, stood out to me too. So I really don't have a whole lot to say on. Um. Additionally, I, I think that the cow who sang a song into the future uh, looks pretty interesting. I may use one of my uh, leftover tickets to uh, attend either the premiere or do a second screen of that. Mm-hmm. And then Girl Picture is a film that um, I'm really excited to spend some time with. Um, I was able to receive a, a screener for that title, and I'm going to be uh, watching it and reviewing it here before the festival gets started so that I can put that out once their embargo lifts. But that's a title that I was excited to reserve a ticket for, even if I, you know, they didn't have access. So those are the other two in this category that I would steer people towards. Yeah, you know, I I don't know why, but I'm kind of drawn to, to movies with really long titles. The Cow Who Sang a Song Into the Future. I mean, what is that? What is that about? Like, tell me more. That's so fascinating the fish are um, <laughs> dying from pollution in a river in south chile uh-huh. it's near a cellulose factory and amid their fl- uh floating bodies a long deceased magdalena bubbles up to the surface gasping for air bringing with her old wounds and a wave of family secrets intriguing Mo- movies with long titles <laughs> there's something to it <laughs> So I will, I'll, I'll, I'll consider that one. That's uh that's, it's on my radar. Um, world cinema documentary competition. How about this one? I almost want to have you guess, but I'm pretty sure that you wouldn't have a clue. No, I don't actually. No. Okay. Um, so there's uh, a few titles in here that I've seen. Um, one of which is Tantura. Um, and honestly, that looking at all these titles in, you know, small resolution detail, I, I think that Tantura is probably the best film I, I will see out of these selections and the one that I was the most interested in. I've also seen Nothing Compares about Sinead O'Connor and The Mission, which is about um, some uh, young Mormon uh, or Jehovah's 
no, they're they're Mormon, uh, Church of Latter-day Saints, going to Europe and proselytizing. Neither of those documentaries were particularly engaging, but Tantura um, is this examination of what happened in 1948 when Israel was made a state and the mass killings that happened um, from is- Israeli soldiers and the, the massacres uh, against um, their neighbors as they built that nation out. And it's, it's um, really sincere and emotional and familial. And uh, it's the type of filmmaking that you really don't see come out very often. Um, so that that's the one that I would recommend out of this. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, it's, it's definitely, I, I think you may have mentioned that one to me before and uh, you know, I'm kind of eyeing it, but I think the one that I've actually been pursuing most in this, and you might disagree, but the one I've been pursuing most is uh, We Met in Virtual Reality um, from Joe Hunting, uh, directorial debut. I think um, he's actually really uh, more in the VR sphere, which is obviously where the subject matter comes from. And VR is something that I'm that I'm increasingly intrigued by. Like I've I've had a VR set before. I actually just recently got um, the Oculus Two so that I could participate with New Frontier uh, projects at Sundance, uh, and I'm looking forward to that. But uh, but yeah, this this kind of emerging medium um, I think is is something that uh, I know I'm slowly getting more um engaged with and more active about like learning about um so Sundance is kind of this really nice hub to do that because you have the new frontier um uh segments of the festival um and then this movie from a you know VR uh industry uh guy who uh, who is, is going to examine I think this movie examines um the role of VR during the pandemic and uh and people that met through VR which it sounds actually, to me like in 2013 making a documentary about tinder yeah like, yeah, yeah which that it, sounded I, like a good idea but now no <laughs> one gives a shit and i think that's exactly what this is <laughs> i don't know like i think that this all kind of goes into like and who knows maybe it is maybe it isn't but uh i think that it's a subject matter that i'm very interested in and kind of how it's it's a, it's approached and um you also really uh i i don't so you're interested 90- in how people are becoming couples through virtual reality yeah sure i mean that I just my, is not something that i'm interested in at all but okay. i met my husband on uh on through uh, a, a dating app right like it's very okay interesting and would how, you like to watch a documentary about that dating app look i tell that story all the time okay <laughs> telling story. the story over <laughs> drinks and watching a 90 minute film are two very different things <laughs> we will see we will see um but uh i guess that's that I, I'm kind of coupling all that together between my virtual reality experience um, with New Frontier and this virtual reality movie. I think there's there's a there's a nugget of like uh, of interesting experiences, conclusions, observations that I can make on VR. So it's just kind of a a full yeah. I mean, it, it's it's interesting technology. I just I don't think that this is the examination of the tech that is going to speak to me at least. Yeah. We will see. Um, I lost my place. Uh, we are moving on to, to next. Next. Next is next. <laughs> uh, what are you most most excited for? Here? Well, I'd be most excited to understand what next means. I think because yeah, that's, that's not at point. all clear to me with these uh, various titles. Um, some of which are documentaries, some of which are, you know, dramatic feature films from what I can tell. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I know a love song is a dramatic feature film and I'm assuming something in the dirt, which is going to be your selection as a dramatic feature film, but, uh, I, I'm not too sure exactly what this means. Um, but in next, uh, my most anticipated film is also a film that I've had the fortune of already seen that's Riotsville USA, which is a, um, essay documentary um, about constructing uh, f- false towns to practice uh, riot drills in and a look at who the decision makers were in, in the 1960s um, and how money was spent and how communication was put out about riots and how to address them. It's a, it's a really interesting documentary that reminds me a little bit of all light everywhere. It, um, really uses, um, 
film as an essay, like a collage to tell a multifaceted story and address um, the history of racism in a, a really passive way that is just absolutely inarguable. It is really refreshing when compared to a lot of the other documentaries I've seen um, in the last year. Um, you know, I, I think that last year I saw over 120 documentaries or something, and only 10 of those were good. And, you know, to already see one great documentary here only two weeks into 2022 is just, it's great. Which, and I, you told me a little bit about this earlier, and I, I, it's, it's now moved more prominently onto my radar because I have to remember that I'm more drawn to narrative film. Uh, which it doesn't say I dislike uh, documentaries, but that's just kind of what I'm, I'm drawn to and what, what mm -hmm. captures my attention uh, the easiest. Um, especially but, at uh, film festivals. Especially at film festivals, right? Uh, but I also have to remember that my favorite film of last year was a documentary from Sundance. Mm -hmm. so. And then <laughs> what many would say is, you know, an experimental documentary format where it's yeah. animated and oh, then yeah. um, talked over. So mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it, one last thing that I'll mention is that the film is directed by um, Sierra Petengill and she co-directed the Reagan show, um, which had a lot of uh, positive reaction to it, or at least, you know, reaction and awareness back in 2017. Um, so if you're familiar with the Reagan show and looking for, um, you know, what that filmmaker is doing next, mm -hmm. the next thing is Riotsville and it's really damn good. Nice. I, uh, yeah, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking more on that one. Um, I did just Google really quick and I, I don't know if they define the next category, but I see this, this uh, description of next fest from Sundance, which mm -hmm. says it showcases stylistically adventurous and bold films. I'll take it. Yep. Okay. That's what next means at Sundance. So <laughs> why don't you tell me why something in the dirt is the best film that hasn't come out yet this year? I mean, Aaron Moorhead and Justin Benson, like, <laughs> need I say more? Look, I don't know a whole lot about Please this. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> you lost me. <laughs> oh, man, that's unfortunate. I don't know a whole lot about this film, but, you know, those those are two names that I pay a lot of attention to. Um, and, and why is that? What have they made? Uh, so they they their style of sci-fi is so... Um, I don't know. It it has this um, th this indie quality um, while also delivering very um, captivating stories uh, in a way. Like I don't know how to explain it. There's just this like mood I get. Um, obviously, the uh, spring, the endless, and oh man, I'm spacing on their newest one. Um, synchronic. Synchronic. Yeah. 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 So uh, you, know, I, I just I I like their style and I like how it's it's sci-fi um kind of horror storytelling um but not with the 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 tone that comes with a lot of mainstream it's it's very it's very their brand they have a brand here and i think that what they do with it is is very captivating in their stories and i'm very interested in seeing what that looks like here so yeah it's it's interesting that they're both uh listed as the only cast members mm -hmm. in a two-hour film I, i'm curious to see exactly how they pull this off and that actually i mean that interests me even more i have this thing where i i love when filmmakers and uh writers and directors do more with less like smaller casts i if you can pull it off i'm all about it because that uh you take away um kind of a, a lot of the things that can distract from quality storytelling um and just kind of hone in on on the character development of the things or hone in on the things that are present right in this case hopefully a whole lot of character development if there's only two people for two hours <laughs> yes well one hopes if the uh if you'll let me the one other title that i'm yeah. i'm really um intrigued by here in the next category is uh the directorial debut a love song from max walker silverman mm. it stars dale dickey um who everybody has seen in something at this point alongside West Studi. Um, but just in case you don't know who Dale Dickey is, she's acted in Hell or High Water, Super 8, Winter's Bone, Changeling, Leave No Trace, Iron Man, uh, Palm Springs, 
domino like mm-hmm. she's just been in yeah, everything yeah. from everyone all the time mm-hmm. uh and this appears to be a film that really centers her as its central figure and she has such a, a unique face and such a, a great screen presence that i i'm excited to see how this um this you know romantic story at a very brief 81 minutes is pulled off i'm assuming that west studi is the other romantic interest um and basically it's two um childhood sweethearts that both get widowed sync up um and you know have a night together and that just sounds so um you know stage like and Mm -hmm. I, i think that both these actors could really um win me over with perhaps like best performance at, at Sundance um, film festival in this um, film. So that's the one that I'm secondarily most excited for. Yeah. Good for pointing that one out. It's on my radar. Uh, I'm going to see if I have time for it. <laughs> Make time. Make time. Right. Ah, I'm excited about this next category. Let's talk about midnight. Midnight indeed. Um do you want to hazard a guess? This one might be a little bit easier for you to uh, to make an attempt at. Oh. <laughs> this one is much easier. I'm pretty sure you're going to go with Fresh on this one. That is correct. I am going to go with Mimi Cave's directorial debut, Fresh, which yes. stars Normal People's Daisy Edgar mm-hmm. Jones alongside the Winter Soldier himself, Sebastian mm-hmm. Stan. I guess I don't know a whole lot about this film because it got picked up by Disney. It got picked up by Hulu in America, and then Disney Disney Plus Plus. is doing distribution months after, or a month after, worldwide. But I don't know that it's actually through Disney Plus or if it's through something called Star um, Mm. that is part of Disney. Disney is just so big. I mean, they they have the rights to distribute it Mm -hmm. digitally. I just don't know exactly which platform that is. Um, Yeah. But yes, it, it is certainly confusing exactly what fresh is and i am not at all confident in that but daisy edgar jones really swept me away in normal people and mm-hmm. i just want to see whatever she does next at this point yeah i, I agree the, the cast uh uh really caught my attention on this one um and uh uh i i guess i just i mean i know the synopsis but how did disney end up with this film <laughs> Maybe it's a lot more meat cute than creepy stalker. Maybe. I, I but guess. I don't know why it would be in midnight if that was true. Yeah. 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 This, this is a very fat, like Disney picking this movie up only made the, me the more fact curious. it's on Hulu makes me think that it's more adult because I, I think that Disney Plus is a lot more kid oriented here in America mm-hmm. um, than maybe it is abroad. I, I don't, I haven't studied exactly what that distribution looks like um mm-hmm. but I, i'd be interested to know those differences and if there is something like star or whatever i was reading in that article about how disney plus will own the rights and then you know mm-hmm. distribute it to these different platforms yeah 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 yeah. i i was already curious about it um but then disney got distribution rights and i'm like okay now i'm even more curious like what is this movie um i hope it's good <laughs> that, that's what i'll say I hope it's good too. Um, so that's, I, was there anything else you want to say? I kind of cut you off because I'm, I'm not, that, that not cut. on <laughs> fresh. I mean, Great. I think it's going to be good. I hope that it's good. I think Desi Edgar Jones is going to be great and I want to watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> what is your selection in midnight, sir? You know what? The one that I am actually looking forward to most is is Speak No Evil. Um, from director, that was going to be my honorable mention. So mm-hmm, from director, I hope I pronounce his name right. Uh, director Christian uh, Taftrup. Um, and pretty, I'm going to have to double check that. I, I'm I'm hoping to get a, an interview with him. I think that'd be really cool. Um, but, that sounds uh, right to me. I just yeah. googled it. Sounds <laughs> right. I mean, he's he's a. Uh, gosh where is he from um denmark so you so, definitely yeah. said it wrong but <laughs> i don't it. know if you said it wrong for an english speaker i so. see fair enough i will <laughs> i will get that clarified <laughs> before i talk to him um but uh i think that this one um i mean I, I i like the premise um and it seems to be like more of that traditional horror kind of film as something that my husband can really enjoy you know i i I subject him to these movies at Sundance, like, I don't know, hatching. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> and tell him, hey, it's a horror film. And he watches it and is not scared, but mortified. <laughs> <laughs> And so I'm excited to be able to uh, to offer him a selection that will actually kind of be up his alley. And I think that this will have uh, a lot of mainstream appeal, or at least I'm hoping it does, um, as far as uh, being a, a genre horror film. What was the um, the New Zealand film that uh, played last home, year? Coming Home in the Dark. That's what I'm mm-hmm. hoping and thinking this might be, like a more conventional, mm-hmm. surprisingly great horror film. I mean, every time I think about it, that's kind of what I like mentally compare it to. Uh, mm-hmm. That just, it, it seems. Which is unfair to a lot of movies I know. because that's so good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but I also, I, I actually um, uh, locked down a ticket for Babysitter as well. Um, that one seemed kind of interesting. Uh, Piggy was on my short list. Um, and, and I'm curious about hatching. <laughs> Although I, I am curious about hatching as well. I don't think I want to watch it though. Yeah. I mean, my pro- my biggest problem with hatching, uh, unfortunately, is that I, I watched the trailer and I'm, 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 because con- hatching has distribution and, uh, and a release date actually. Um, mm-hmm. And I feel like the trailer uh, gives too much away, unfortunately. Um, it pretty much outlines the, the like, plot points of the film all the way up to uh, a big reveal i guess and well i i do respect that because the plot points didn't interest me at all and <laughs> you know at least i didn't have to watch the movie to find out i i don't respond to yeah. its uh storytelling styling <laughs> that's fair um yeah i mean that that's been my if i if i hadn't watched the trailer i might have gotten a ticket to it but uh i i think and it's not even that the the trailer turned me off of the film i just I, th- I still think it's interesting. I just wish the trailer hadn't given so much. And this is why I like going to festivals because I can see things before marketing and trailers kind of spoil it. Mm-hmm. Um, and well, this one kind of spoiled it. So, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I will second the, the babysitter though. does look yeah. pretty interesting. I'm considering spending a ticket on that myself. Mm-hmm. Well, let's move on to Spotlight where you got one movie that you want to talk about. That is correct. (laughs) This is actually called the World Cinema Dramatic Winner After Yang uh, category. And the most anticipated title I have is A24's After Yang from Koganada, starring Colin Farrell, Jodie Turner-Smith, who, um, gosh, what was the name of the film that she was in with Daniel Kaluuya? Queen and Slim. She mm-hmm. was the uh, the queen on Queen and Slim, and then Haley Lou Richardson returning with Koganada after uh, Columbus, which they previously shot together. Um, this is a science fiction film. It's um, not only written and directed, but also edited by Koganada. Um, and I'm just excited that I get to watch it. I've been anticipating this movie since 2019 or 2020, and I finally get to watch it now in 2022. Um, and I look forward to it being my favorite film of the festival. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm excited for this film because you're excited for this film. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> I'm uh, glad my effusiveness you, is working. You, yes. Yes. You are very, um, very active about really being excited for this film and that couldn't, you know, it, I couldn't help, but maybe latch on to that. It, it sounds, I mean, it sounds like a great film. Um, and uh, or at least a great story interesting premise i i don't know a whole lot about it um but you're excited so i'm excited and of the things in this category have, have uh, you seen columbus i've not oh you got to go back and watch columbus that's, that's my that's, that's my homework this week you, you like john columbus. cho right yes absolutely okay so go watch this you're gonna okay. love it it's Fair amazing enough. Um, I will say the uh, the only the other one that that uh, that stands out in this category that I have not seen but probably should have by now because it played at like every film festival is, is probably, the worst person in the world the worst person in the world um, which is a great movie yes um, and so I'm looking for I will be um, uh, covering that one for Sundance and so I'm looking forward to finally seeing it after like everyone else has seen it <laughs> yes so I guess technically the worst person in the world might end up being a better movie than after yang um mm-hmm. but everyone's kind of already seen it um mm-hmm. that's why i didn't even consider it because i i'd already seen it like it's not in my 2022 brain it's in 2021 right. um you know it's it's up for oscars in 2021 so mm-hmm. you know it's um 
but it's it's a wonderful film and if anyone hasn't seen it and you can get a 20 dollar ticket to it mm-hmm. please do it's it's beautiful and renata reinsev or however you pronounce her name gives one of the best performances by an actress uh in the last year it's it's a great film and everybody should see it yeah Okay, these next two categories, we're just going to skim through really quickly because there's not a whole lot to choose from. Let's talk really quickly about this mysterious kids uh, uh, category that we're both a little, a little confused I about. would love to. <laughs> so I was presented with the fact that we're not talking about our most anticipated films. We're talking about all categories okay. right before we started recording. And that gave me about one second to compare the two films, which are called Micah or Summering, and make my choice because I was unaware of either of these. My choice, even though I'm probably not going to see it, is going to be uh, James Ponsoldt's uh, film Summering. He made The End of the Tour, The Spectacular Now, The Circle with Emma Watson and Tom Hanks. Uh, he made Smashed back in 2012 with Aaron Paul, who you talked about in Duel alongside Mary Elizabeth Winstead. He's a filmmaker that I've cursorily um, seen most of the films of. And if I was going to watch either of these, I would definitely lean towards the one that I know I like the filmic language of, even if the stories are a little bit... Um, you know, average or reduced, just not not too um, enticing, and the language never gets super expressive. But they're they're generally fun, high quality watches or good quality, I should say. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to second that uh, that choice. Um, I guess we only have two two to choose from. Uh, I'm going to second that choice uh, for a lot of the same reasons that you are. I also was captivated by the fact that it, it was acquired by Bleecker Street. Uh, and that appeals to me. I think they put out um, uh, pretty good movies. And so, uh, yeah, for all the reasons that you said and the Bleecker Street distribution, um, I don't know a whole lot about Micah. Um, maybe maybe I will at some point, um, but yeah. Anyway, so there's that. And then the other category um, uh, that we'll skim through really quickly is special screenings. There mm-hmm. are, I guess, four special screenings, but we'll uh one of them is is uh is a oh we're skipping so. to the end okay gotcha <laughs> yeah yeah i see what i did there huh uh-huh yeah <laughs> throwing a real um, wrench in my plans here yes 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 um so special screenings uh the three that that um are new movies at least our uh last flight home uh, the American Dream and other fairy tales, which was a, a late entry or at least a lately announced entry, uh, mm-hmm. as well as Phoenix Rising. What yes. And then the other title is The Incredibly True Story of Two Girls in Love from 1995 that was just added apparently this morning yeah, um, like from that. what we're able to tell. So I had none of these films on my radar, uh, but I, I did some cursory looking at each of them and it strikes me that, um, you know, um, there's no nice way to say it. The American Dream and Other Fairy Tales and Phoenix Rising are both PR documentaries. They're total public image attempts. You know, one is Evan Rachel Wood, you know, revamping her public image. The other is that Disney descendant um, making her seem like some bastion of hope against a conglomerate. So neither of those interest me at all because they're just self-serving pieces of uh, filmmaking. What what I'm intrigued by is Last Flight Home from Andy Timoner, um, which is just uh, the story of a guy who founded an airline um, and then decided to medically terminate his life and the 15-day waiting period um, between those choices and when the event actually occurred and uh, how the family reacted to that. I think that sounds like a very interesting found footage um, edited style documentary that is not going to be self-serving in its existence like the other titles that um, are new releases here. But isn't it fun to say that a Disney movie is at Sundance? (laughs) In no way is it fun. But that reaction was, and that's exactly why I did that. <laughs> um, I'm going to cue the gif of listen here, you little shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I'm going to agree with a lot of what you said. Um, I mean, I personally don't mind self-serving uh, entertainments periodically. I, it's, 
it's whatever um thomas is pro propaganda i don't know i'm pro entertainment i guess like entertain me um but i will agree as far as like hard-hitting um and and intriguing uh documentary uh yeah, documentaries I, I i would agree that last fight home is probably going to be the, the the more um compelling one of the of the three so um i actually i, I will probably watch the american dream um I don't know how much I'm going to get from it because you disgust me. I know. <laughs> I love doing this. <laughs> love doing this. Um, but uh, but yeah. Anyway, just uh, those are the special screenings, and um, you know, two of them were just announced like a couple of days ago. So yeah, we need to consider that. And then last, but certainly not least, not least at all, um, this is the biggest category to discuss. Yeah, I don't so... even. I, I've just been looking at this, and like, there's. I don't know. Should I just pick half? You just pick half. We might, end, <laughs> we might end up talking about half. Let's move on to the premieres category. Um, and there is a lot, a lot in too much. this category, too much that uh, that uh, to talk about. And this is why it's really fun to say, okay, pick one that you think is going that that you have as your most anticipated. And that just is not. <laughs> a thing because i'm not really that excited about any of these but i'm curious about all of them mm -hmm. or or about all the ones that i'm considering for my my most intrigued by right like right. there's not one that's more intriguing to me than any other right it's like am i okay is um you know dakota johnson sonoya mizuno directed by Tignataro. Like I'm very mm -hmm. curious about that. But then Emily, the criminal with Aubrey Plaza, I'm very curious about honk mm -hmm. for Jesus, save your soul. That sounds silly. Very curious <laughs> about that. Lucy and Desi, very curious. The princess, very curious. Sharp stick, very curious. Resurrection, very curious. We need to talk about Cosby, very curious, but most anticipated. Oh boy. That's your, I will say you're I, really I, not helping me out. I, I know, I know this, that qualifier. This, this is this is the fun part of this uh, this particular uh, video. This is definitely where I have the most tickets. Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would agree. Most of my tickets fall into this premieres category, um, and it will it will be fascinating to see which of these uh, turn out to be great films. Uh, and I think that there's a lot of potential for a lot of really great filmmaking and storytelling. Yeah, that's a good here. direction for us to go. Which one do you think is going to actually end up being a great film? Uh, now you're throwing a wrench in my plan because I had my most anticipated. I agree with you. It's it's very hard to narrow it down, but I know I have one that- uh, And I don't, so I'm pivoting. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you my one after we do this little detour thing you mm -hmm. just installed. Um, mm -hmm. Which one has the, the opportunity to be the- you know, a great film. I would have maybe said Final Cut. <laughs> I, <didn't. laughs> I disagree on principle just because we've already both seen that movie. It's called One Cut of the Dead and they don't need to remake it. <laughs> That's fair. Um, no, but for <clears throat> real, um, I think that uh... yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm having the same problem now. Uh, I don't know. Okay, now you have to choose which one has the opportunity to be. I'm, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the princess. You think the princess is gonna be? So you're going documentary. I'm going documentary. I don't think that either. Uh, so I've got two documentaries that I'm excited for. I don't think either one is gonna be truly great. Mm -hmm. um, Lucy and Desi and the princess. Yeah. I. <clears throat> True greatness is like, you know, it's an accident alchemy type of a thing. And I, I think that Am I Okay has the, the most um, accidental magic that mm -hmm. could occur with it. Um, but I, I also sneakingly suspect that resurrection might just be yeah. harrowing enough yeah. that it ends up being great because Rebecca Hall can just dominate a screen when you let mm -hmm. her i.e the night house and mm -hmm. if you just let her control this film from the sophomore filmmaker um you know it i i don't know i think one of those two uh i'm, I'm gonna go with resurrection or am i okay have the best chance 
to be truly great i think yeah and i'm i'm actually i i'm locking it in for the record this is official i'm gonna if i'm choosing to i'm gonna i'm either gonna choose uh the princess or lucy and desi um going with the documentaries i think one of those at least one of those are, are gonna be i mean i i guess i'm just going off of my experience of the fact that last year my favorite film of the year was a documentary from sundance so i am just working off of what i know um but i will say that my most anticipated film and the one that i have actually um been i guess most excited about seeing for some reason that i can't explain really is when you finish saving the world i don't know why i'm so drawn to jesse eisenberg uh projects um but i think that they're i, I think that he takes risks um sometimes they work sometimes they don't um but i think that his career is so vast that i'm always willing to try uh what whatever he's got going on whether it's acting whether it's writing and now this is his directorial debut um so uh that I, that is the one that i highlighted as my most anticipated um for those reasons yeah it's gonna be interesting i mean he's um got a good relationship with richard aote who mm -hmm. does not make films very often or at all anymore but i think was one of the most promising young directors back in the, the mid 2010s. And mm -hmm. if he, you know, learned anything from making films with, with Richard and with Zack Snyder and, mm -hmm. and all those guys, then, you know, this could be very promising or it could just be a middling, you know, festival movie, which is what I'm leaning more towards. I'm, I'm happy to be wrong. I really hope I'm wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. we we will see i mean i think what's the runtime it's it's a relatively short runtime right um i'm not too certain let me pull that up we got 88 minutes 88 minutes so that is right. a nice quick uh jaunt through mm -hmm. and he's leaning on julianne Moore, which you know that that's certainly a strength um uh, we'll it, I, I actually didn't realize this before but it's with 824 that's promising oh did, did they acquire it or develop it it's listed under the credits uh, as a A24 film. Maybe they, they co-developed it then. Yeah, that's, um, I would have a lot more hope about that if I didn't just go through 2021 where there were multiple A24 movies that I didn't <laughs> like or hated. <laughs> um, so we will see. <laughs> yes, yes, we will. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I guess just to kind of wrap this, this category up, um, there, there's so much in here so much mm -hmm. uh to to see and and so much potential um i'm i'm very interested in seeing a lot of these films uh honk for jesus save your soul is another one that stands out to me um it's just hard to pick a comedy right it it, it is comedy is a comedy is very difficult to do um i think the the comedy that stood out to me last year was uh on the count of three and i liked it a lot but i also I mean, it hasn't been distributed yet, has it? It comes out uh, at the end of this month, or yeah, it comes out before March. It, I I just had it in my calendar. Um, yeah, come up um, for something. It it it's it's a good film, and I I I I really liked it, but I don't know how much like mainstream appeal it'll have. Um, and anyway, but yeah, that just that kind of like the comedy comedies are are very very tough to to pull off. So yeah, it's um. I, I mean, with Regina Hall and Sterling K. Brown, like that, you know, if you're gonna succeed, that's, that's a really good framework to do it on. Um, it's another directorial debut, um, which I, I love to cram in here. I'm just not mm -hmm. super confident with the images that I've seen that it's not going to just be like a low grade eyes of, or, uh, what was it? The Tammy Faye movie? What was the full oh, title of the that? eyes of Tammy Faye. Yeah, and I did not. Is that, like that I thought that was what the documentary was called. Through through Do I have it? Through the eyes of Tammy Faye or something like that. Um yeah, the show Walter one is the one I'm talking about because there's there's a documentary. Mm. Um oh no, they're both called The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Okay, so there's originally the documentary in 2000 and then mm -hmm. the film that show Walter made is the same title. And it it's just the images um like the press stills that I've seen like it's mm -hmm. kind of got that gaudy um look to it and mm -hmm. i you know we'll see i'm just i'm not gonna over hope for it <laughs> yeah yeah that's fair um 
And I think the last thing I want to say about this category is I really, I really hope that we need to talk about Cosby gets an award because I don't have time for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I really do not have time for this until awards day. So if we could just like make an award for that one to win so that I can see it. <laughs> yes. Um, I, that's, that's one of the ones that I kind of built my schedule around, um, mm just because I, I believe it's a directorial debut as well for um, Bell. I, I can't remember his full name. It's like F. Kamu Bell or, or something like that. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, this is 240 minutes. It's, I think, going to be distributed as a limited series. Mm-hmm. It's already got distribution. Um, but this is Was- one that I just wanted to make sure that I got in during the festival and built my whole schedule around essentially i think who distributes this is it was it netflix or was it uh, i thought it was maybe show show time Time. yeah 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 um yeah this i i really 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 want to see it but it is very it is a part of the episodic um uh lineup and so well the two episodic uh um selections being this and genius the the is that what it is from uh kanye west yes like, oh, and it's that, only like the, the first part of the trilogy um see, see now that that bothers me don't don't screen something unless you're screening the whole thing like just think about just think about going to a film festival going uh going to see uh, a hidden life and they only screen the first hour and a half of it <laughs> like what <laughs> Yeah, I think that comparing Terrence Malick to Kanye might be a little bit. Oh, uh, I'm not compar- Hold on. Okay, let's <laughs> let's clarify. I'm not comparing the artists and just <laughs> movie like long movie to uh to episodic release. Like I just I I I hate that idea. If I'm gonna watch, if I want to, if I'm gonna watch, I don't want to stop halfway through and and then have to give my opinion on what I thought about this because I think conclusions are everything. How you end. Uh, a story is is so important. There are so many times where I hated a movie until like the last five minutes. And then I was like, oh. Memoria. <laughs> yes, yes. Memoria is exactly that. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyway, I, 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 I'm not really on board with that. But uh, So are you ready for me to throw a few wrenches your way? Yeah, let's, yeah. You <laughs> forgot a few categories, especially but category yeah. that you're oh, uniquely that's right. That's right. qualified yes, for. Yep. So why don't you tell us what your most anticipated title or titles are in New Frontier? You know what? New Frontier. So I haven't um, had a chance to look through all of the. Don't lie. We both yet. know your most anticipating Flat Earth because you're a big supporter of a flat earth. <laughs> Please don't get me in trouble. Don't cancel me here. <laughs> for the record, I do not I do not believe in a flat earth, but you know, you run more... hills and you tell me that they're flat all the time. <laughs> oh, there, there's be, some pretty interesting gonna, stuff. There's uh, gonna... this is not a ceremony. If I had VR, that's yes. one that I would be most intrigued by. So I actually um that's I think of the VR category, that is what got me interested in participating in VR. Um is um is this is not a ceremony uh which i actually have had the chance to experience now um and i'm very i'm very interested in in uh how people respond to that uh you know it's it's produced by the uh national film board of canada who we've covered uh films from them in the past uh here on for and and you've you've talked with them as well um Mm -hmm. you know there there's a big objective uh uh, to promote Native American stories, or I'm sorry, Indigenous stories. Um, uh, and I think that this project, uh, it, it obviously takes square aim at that goal of, of putting um, very traumatic uh, Indigenous uh, stories out there that um, that aren't told or that are buried uh, and, and telling these very, um, uh, these compelling uh, situations that uh, that clearly identify blatant racism uh, and blatant disregard for indigenous people, and it's it's a it's a heavy uh, experience listening to these stories. But it's also so um, something that I think people should see. Yeah, the the other one that caught my eye is Dagnosia, mm-hmm. um, which is an immersive documentary apparently um, about being in like a military internet addiction camp Mm -hmm. um it just sounds super interesting to me um depending on like the level of cacophony and visual um stimulation or lack thereof Mm -hmm. and the monotony that that they'd be able to achieve so there there's some really interesting projects i'm i'm jealous of your experience 
I do. I, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to find the time to come down. I Make will happily Seattle. allow you to come down <laughs> and drink my alcohol oh, and yes. then kick you out and keep your headset. <laughs> uh, you cannot do that. <laughs> I will be taking that with me. That costs a pretty penny. <laughs> um, and then let's hop over to another section that is not films. Let's go over to the indie series program. Um, have you spent any time looking at these six different entries? I have not. Um, so I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, actively and intensely uh, listen to what you have to say about them. All right. Well, um, in general, when we come across indie television, um, we're normally seeing pilot episodes for a series that have not been picked up and are kind of being shopped. And, you know, they're entered into these film festivals to try to drum up buzz or see what type of reactions will be made, maybe get acquired by Netflix, a Hulu, you know, a, a, a Tubi, you know, it, mm -hmm. it really depends on um, the budget of how these different series are made, but there's um, a few different um, world spanning, like there's a, a My Trip to Spain, which is obviously a Spanish series, The Dark Heart, which is uh, Swedish and a little bit um, more dark and mythological. Um, <clears throat> Culture Beat seems really interesting to me. It's, um, uh, according to them, it's a high culture uh, lowbrow lens look at, um, you know, culture. And it's kind of like Dolly G show, if you remember that, or Anthony mm -hmm. Bourdain's No Reservations. Um, mm -hmm. and that That's something that I would be intrigued by. It sounds more like a YouTube series to me, honestly, but um, it's it sounds like something I could be convinced to watch. Um, and then there's uh, Bring on the Dancing Horses, which stars Kate mm -hmm. Bosworth. Uh, it's a... Um, I, I think it's just the uh, opening episode of a potential series in which she's a, a mercenary or a gun for hire and goes around killing people, taking their confessions. Um, so a few different interesting um, little limited series here, um, you know, independently created and being shopped at the Sundance market. All right. Cool. 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 Do we cover everything? I think we've touched everything that I know to address, but we mm -hmm. haven't touched everything, everything, I'm sure. Yeah, um, one other uh, random plug that I will give is as I was going through the short films here, um, I noticed that they have the original um, Destin Daniel Cretton short, short term 12. Um, oh, interesting. That had Lakeith Stanfield in it. Um, and like no one else that anybody knows. Um, uh, and this short was made in 2009, um, you know, well before the feature film Short Term 12. So mm -hmm. I, I would encourage people that are attending the festival to maybe go take a look back at that. You know, it, it's interesting to go see what someone like Lakeith was doing um, as far as the quality of his work. What, what would that be? 13 years ago now. Um, mm -hmm. Just it, that's that's kind of a cool feature about these anniversary shorts. Mm -hmm. Even though there's too much to watch, it, it is neat <laughs> that you can go do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Well, I think we've been at this long enough. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap up. Uh, Taylor, when all this Sundance coverage hits, where can people find it on your site? Uh, at drinkinthemovies.com. And uh, that's where everything lives. Nice. Do you have any social media <laughs> that people can connect with? <laughs> uh, yeah, um, we're on all of them, I think. Um, if you just go to drinkinthemovies.com, though, there's a whole page that'll tell you where to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Letterboxd and all that jazz. Um, yeah. How about you? Do you have social media? No, social I forget. media. Who does that? um actually i have been thinking about starting a tiktok but uh yeah we'll, we'll see about that anyway you can find for real movie news and reviews on facebook twitter and instagram at movies for real um you can find this coverage on our website moviesforreal.net of course for real spelled f-o-r-r-e-e-l um and you can also connect with me personally on twitter and instagram uh at being tsj and uh yeah all this coverage is going to start hitting on january 20th and excited to share what we uh what we watch and uh and how everything's going and we'll be doing this again to uh mm -hmm. festival and and uh after the festival so we get to yeah. have a lot more discussions and actually draw some conclusions on all the speculation we just did 
Yes, and if uh, if you just want to talk shit to Thomas, you can just tell him how bad Flea is, and ah. he'll he'll really appreciate and react strongly to that. No. <laughs> you didn't like Flea. Do not talk to me. Okay. <laughs> I think it's fine, and I voted for it for best animated film of the year, sir. That deserves a clapping so take emoji. That that deserves a clapping emoji. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm excited to uh, sync up with you after we have our first. Uh, batch of viewings and uh, try mm. to figure out what the heck just happened. Yes. Yeah. Looking forward to it. And uh, we'll try to rope Beaumont into this as well at some point. Uh, I'm sure he'll have a lot of opinions to to share as well. Yeah. So. I look forward to a, a more thorough conversation um, mm-hmm. that, that's many pointed. Yeah. Yep. For sure. Well, thank you again for joining me on this on this uh, video and uh, for everyone listening. Until next time, keep it for real. Bye.